the various SIR, SARQ, SARQV functions are all meant to deal with different types of disease modeling problems. Each of these different problems and these different functions have a different set of conditions in which they're operating, and that sets up how they're actually defined and how they are built. The lab itself will go through the process of how these all are designed, what the models actually are and how they behave. But here we're talking about how we use these different functions. Let's open them all up. So each of these function runs a different type of disease model, and it's given by the equations written here in each of the components. So SIR just runs a simple model like this, where there's only two parameters, R and C. SIRQ is a little more fancy, it has you know five different components with six different parameters in it, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, eta, and rho. SIRQV adds one more parameter, zeta here, and this tells you how the models should look for each case. And if you notice, each of these requires you to pass in the parameters, a set of initial conditions to happen at t equals zero, and a final time tf. So you pass in values for the two parameters, you pass in a set of initial conditions, and you pass in a final time here. For SARQ, you need six parameters, initial conditions and final time. And for the QV, you need seven parameters, initial conditions and final time. Now all of these use the runga kutta system method, which is written here. You do not need to care about what this is or how this works. It's the same, it's the same idea as the runga kutta method from before, but now it works on systems as well. But it solves all of these, and that's the important part. The last important thing to realize here is these all have outputs for each of the unknown functions in the system of equations. So for the SIR model, you have three outputs, S, I, and R, and they will always come back in that order. So if you want to use it back in the main script, you need to call SIR model with three variables for these outputs. For SARQ, you have five, and for SIRQV, you also have five. So you'll need to have those there to get the outputs from these functions. Let's see what this might look like in actual code. First, we have the SIR model. It only needs three outputs. I input two parameters, this R and this C. These are conditions. And the main thing you'll see from the setup for the model, which is given in the lab itself, is that the initial conditions must add to one. So we'll go 0 0.95, 0 0.05, and zero. That's usually how this is gonna be set up. And final time of 200. Run this. And now we just have the variables we can look at. We can look at S, but that's not entirely useful. It's probably easier to graph it. So this now we'll get a plot that has S, I, and R all on the same axes. And that's what the graphs look like. And that's a good way to look at what's going on with this situation over time. You can see S, which is the blue, is falling off. R, which is the root population, starts rising up here. And then I peaks and falls off like you'd expect a disease to do. And the exact same setup works for the other two methods as well. For SARQ, we have our five outputs, which will run just fine, provided you put the right number of parameters in, right? I need five outputs here. I need six coefficients here. And then my initial condition must now also have five entries. It had three for the first case. It will have five for this case as well. And that'll run just fine. You could plot that again if you wanted to, as well as do the same for the SIRQV model. These all run and draw their graphs just like they would be expected to. As you'll see when going through the lab, for the last two, D ends up being the more important stat than R. So if I actually compare them for these ones, we'll see that we actually get the better result in this last one with using D instead of R or looking at these graphs. You can do a lot more with drawing different graphs for these and different setups for all the stuff, but this gives you the basic idea of how these different methods work, how to use them to generate these disease modeling results, then be able to answer questions about disease modeling for the corresponding MATLAB assignment.